One's own mind and existence were things that philosophers such as Augustine and Descartes thought were a priori knowable. That is, knowable independently of sensory experience. Whether bodies exist can only be known a posteriori, that is, through sensory observation. Nonetheless, there are facts about bodies that can only be established through a priori philosophical reasoning. Consider the question, does a thing remain one and the same through change of its parts or properties? This question concerns the identity of an object through time and change. What the senses detect at any moment is an array of sensory qualities, colours, shapes, textures and so on. But these change from moment to moment. Consider a lump of wax as it melts and changes from being hard and cold to fluid and hot. Why suppose that there is anything more than this constant flux in appearances? Why suppose that anything endures through that change? Matters become even more complex when we consider bodies that change their parts. At least in the case of wax, it's the same bits of matter that undergo the change. But consider an animal. Animal bodies are constantly replacing their parts. What exactly, if anything, can be said to remain one and the same through a change of parts? Medieval philosophers thought that this question created a paradox, the so-called growing paradox. If a body just is its parts, then nothing grows. But Socrates grows, and Socrates is a body, whatever else he may be. Various responses to the paradox have been offered. One is to deny that a body is just its parts. Medieval philosophers often relied on the soul as something that persisted while the body changed. But it was not clear what identity the soul could have distinct from matter. A popular contemporary response denies that there is anything that literally persists through time and change of parts. This is the view known as four-dimensionalism, or temporal parts theory. What seem to be enduring objects are, in this view, really more like events or processes, which, like the flow of a river through a valley, occupy an identifiable region of space-time, but involve different physical objects at different times. Just as any body has distinct spatial parts, so too, on this theory, it has distinct temporal parts or stages. The parts are unified through time by being causally connected and similar to one another. Objects perdure, they say, not endure. You may find it odd to think of a body, or yourself, as a collection of distinct temporal stages. You may wonder why, if your present temporal stage is not identical with a past stage, you should now be held responsible for the deeds of past stages or why you should now act for the sake of a distinct future stage. You might wonder what kind of unity there could really be between such radically distinct temporal parts. <laughs>